Hey there, welcome to another video. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to prove the double and half angle formulas that you're gonna use a lot of, especially when you get to calculus two. So uh, some of these formulas, they look kind of like, what, where are we gonna do that? And then you get to calc two and they all come back. And so I'm gonna show you how to prove them. We're gonna walk through those proofs right now. Um, after that, what we're gonna do is, on a different video, just, just use them figure out how they're, how they're used, some proofs, get some more identities out of that, and then uh, deal with some equations involving some double angle and half angle formulas. So let's get right into it. The first thing we're gonna do is acknowledge that a lot of these formulas that we've already had can be used to make more formulas. If you use an identity to make another identity, you kind of get two for one. And so what we're going to do is use like the, the sum and difference formulas for sine and for cosine and for tangent to develop these double angle formulas. And here's the thought process. If this is the sum formula for sine, so sum of those two angles, and we know what that equals, what if we just called alpha and beta the same angle. So instead of sine of alpha plus beta, maybe it's sine of theta plus theta. Well, what's theta plus theta? Theta plus theta would be two theta or double some angle and it'll give us a formula. So we're going to do that right now. So suppose for this sum formula for sine that we just do that. We say instead of sine alpha plus beta, we have sine theta plus theta. Well, what would that do? Instead of alpha and beta in the rest of this formula, because alpha is replaced by theta and beta is replaced by theta, both the first and the second angle are just theta. So all of these would be theta. Now we know what sine of alpha of theta plus theta is, that's sine of two theta. But check this out. We would have sine theta cosine theta plus cosine theta sine theta. We know that when we have multiplication, the two factors that we have are commutative. So cosine theta sine theta is the same thing as sine theta cosine theta. So what that means is that this and this are identical. So we have two sine theta cosine theta. So sine of two theta equals this is sine theta cosine theta, this is sine theta cosine theta. So add them up, basically combine like terms, we get two sine theta cosine theta. And that's it. That's our very first double angle formula. It's the only one that we have for sine. We're actually gonna get three of them for cosine, but for sine of two theta, this is it. This is all we get for our double angle formula. So that's, if you have sine two theta, this is the one that you're gonna use. And you are gonna see this an awful lot in calculus two. We oftentimes go from here to here. Sometimes we go from here to here. Now let's give it a try with cosine alpha plus beta. We're gonna deal with the same thing. We're gonna think, well, if I want a double angle formula, instead of alpha plus beta, let's just consider them to be the same, like theta and theta. That would give us cosine of two theta. And in the same fashion that we just did, if alpha and beta are both the same angle, let's call it theta, then all of these angles will be replaced with theta as well. This is the sum formula for cosine, but now that we have the same angle, we'll have cosine theta, cosine theta, sine theta, sine theta. So we're just replacing alpha and beta with the same angle so that we can get something like that, cosine of two theta. And all of these will be replaced. So cosine alpha, cosine beta says cosine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle. Well, both of our angles are theta now. So cosine theta, cosine beta. Same thing for here, sine theta, sine theta. And really conveniently, we see that cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine squared theta. We know that when we multiply something times itself, we get an exponent of two. Cosine theta, cosine theta gives us cosine squared theta. And remember when we write that, we write the cosine with the power two and then the theta, but it represents cosine theta in parentheses, that whole quantity squared. So on the left-hand side, we're gonna have that cosine two theta. On the right-hand side, we get cosine squared. 
minus sine squared theta. That right there is one of three double angle formulas for cosine. So we're going to manipulate this a little bit. But that's the very first one. How in the world are we going to manipulate it? Well, we can do a few things knowing what cosine squared theta and sine squared theta are by the Pythagorean identity. So, so we can change this around just a little bit and get, get kind of three for one. So let's take a look at what sine squared theta is. I hope you remember that. I hope you remember that the Pythagorean identity simply says sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. If we solve for sine squared theta by subtracting cosine squared theta, we get one minus cosine squared theta. At the same time, we could have subtracted sine squared theta and got cosine squared theta is one minus sine squared theta. We could have done that as well. Let's use this one right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this double angle formula that we've already made from our sum formula for cosine. So yeah, those are the same. This has to be cosine squared minus sine squared, but let's go ahead and substitute. If sine squared theta is one minus cosine squared theta, we know that by the Pythagorean identity, let's take this and replace it with that. So instead of cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, we've replaced sine squared theta with one minus cosine squared theta because of the Pythagorean identity. It's really important to have those parentheses because our signs are going to change. And if we combine some like terms, man, we got a cosine squared theta, cosine squared theta, that's two cosine squared theta. Minus one. That's the second of the double angle formulas for cosine. So cosine two theta, you could use cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. That's the one I'm gonna use most often. But you could also use this. Cosine two theta is also equal to this identity. That's another double angle formula for cosine. Now we can also do the same thing or something very similar by solving this for cosine squared theta and replacing this piece with whatever that equals. So let's try that now. So instead of solving for sine squared theta, let's solve for cosine squared theta. So this was option one, but if we subtract sine squared theta from both sides from here, we get cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. We've used that many times before, but now let's use it to create another formula for this. I've gone ahead and just written this again. So this is the same exact formula, but it's a little nicer to see here. So we're gonna replace this piece with one minus sine squared theta by the Pythagorean identity. So one minus sine squared theta, that is cosine squared theta, same thing minus sine squared theta. You see something really similar happen to what we've just done. We have some like terms again. So we could also write cosine two theta or the double angle formula for cosine as one minus two sine squared theta. Those starred items that I've done here, here, and here, those are the three double angle formulas for cosine. So we use the sum formulas. We said, this is the only one for sine. Double angle formula for sine is that. Um, but for cosine, we've got a few of them because we have some, some manipulations of the Pythagorean identity. We have one here, si cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. We actually saw that earlier. We could have used an identity. This is an identity. That formula counts as an identity. We've changed it. We said, yeah, we could write this as two cosine squared theta minus one, or we can write this as one minus two sine squared theta. So those are the three formulas, uh, double angle formulas for cosine. We can also do a couple other things. We can take and solve for sine squared and cosine squared and get something a little bit different, some identities based on these double angle formulas. 
So let's try that now. Let's take a look at this. Cosine 2 theta equals 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. If we solve for cosine squared theta, we would add 1 and divide by 2. So cosine 2 theta plus 1 over 2, that would solve for cosine squared theta for us. Oftentimes you'll see this written as 1 plus cosine 2 theta instead of cosine 2 theta plus 1. Nothing simplifies there, um, not even the 2 and the 2, because 2 theta is the argument of cosine. In order to change that, you have to have some sort of identity. That's what these double angle formulas actually do. They allow you to change that angle into something perhaps more usable. We're going to do the same thing with, with this guy. So if we solve that for sine squared theta, we would subtract 1 and divide by negative 2, or we could add sine squared theta, subtract cosine 2 theta, and then divide by 2. That's what I'm going to choose to do so I don't have to divide by a negative. So I'm going to add 2 sine squared theta, subtract cosine 2 theta. If we do that, we get 1 minus cosine 2 theta. And because we added 2 sine squared theta, we have that positive over here. Now we divide by 2 and we solve for sine squared theta. And this, and this, are a couple of identities that we can now use. So we have four new identities or formulas on the board. We've got sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta, the double angle formula for sine. We've got cosine 2 theta equals one of three things, cosine squared minus sine squared theta, or 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, or 1 minus sine squared theta. So those are the double angle formulas for cosine. From there, from those, the last two formulas, we get a couple other identities that we use quite a bit. So we're, we're going to now get into tangent, but there, and I'm going to recap all this, write it down for you, but there's now five new formulas that we can use. I guess I miscounted. There's six new formulas that we can use, and we're about to create two more. Let's look at tangent. Tangent of alpha plus beta is tangent alpha plus tangent beta over 1 minus tangent alpha tangent beta. If we say, yeah, let's just suppose that those are the same angle, then call them both theta. Then tangent of alpha plus beta would give you well, if they're the same angle called theta, tangent of theta plus theta. That's 2 theta. It'll create a double angle formula for tangent. So let's go ahead and replace these two with theta, given as 2 theta, and everything over there with theta saying we're still following the formula, the sum formula for tangent. But now if we have the same angle, all those angles let us combine some like terms, multiply and get a power 2 for tangent. So tangent of theta plus theta equals everything would get replaced with theta. Tangent of the first plus tangent of the second, both theta, over one minus the same thing. So tangent of two theta would be this is 2 tangent theta. Tangent theta plus tangent theta says, yeah, two of them. You combine like terms, 2 tangent theta. Over 1 minus tangent theta times tangent theta is tangent squared theta. Remember that when you multiply two things, you get a power 2. When you multiply trig functions, that power 2 looks a little funny. It's right above the actual function, so you don't get it confused with a, a squared angle. It's a squared function. That's why it's there. So tangent squared theta means tangent theta quantity squared. That's exactly what we have. That's the double angle formula for tangent. There's only one of them. But we can do something a little bit different combining some of these ideas. Remember that tangent equals sine over cosine. So tangent squared theta would equal sine squared theta over cosine squared theta.
But check this out. Because we've already solved for something, sine squared theta and cosine squared theta, in an identity, we can now use that. These are identities. They come from the formulas that we've just proved from other formulas that are proven already. So we can now say, yeah, if you ever have sine squared theta, you could certainly write it as this. If you ever have cosine squared theta, you could certainly write it as that. No problem. Let's go ahead and replace that. So tangent squared theta equals sine squared theta. Let's use this instead. Over cosine squared theta, yeah, let's use that instead. And it will create yet another identity for us. Now that looks kind of nasty because it's a complex fraction, but if we multiply both the numerator and denominator by two, two over two, that's a fancy one, but it's gonna allow us to simplify our fraction. Then what we're gonna get is one minus cosine two theta over one plus cosine two theta. And that gives us another formula or identity for tangent. or at least for tangent squared theta. So we gain a couple other ones. We have a double angle formula for tangent, and we have another identity for tangent squared theta. So what I'm gonna do right now is talk about the half angle formulas. We're gonna prove those, and I'm gonna recap everything and show you all the formulas that you would wanna have next to you when you're working on some, some of these uh, next few problems. Okay, I know I've done a lot of proofs so far, and they've been pretty quick because they're, they're really, fairly straightforward uh, from our formulas. But now what we're gonna do is something kind of fancy. We are gonna create half angle formulas from our identities that we got stemming from our double angle formulas. Now, that sounds like a lot of words, but remember, we used our sum formulas to get our double angle formulas. We manipulated our double angle formulas to get these three formulas for sine squared, cosine squared, and tangent squared theta. Now what we're gonna do is kind of trick them a little bit. We're gonna let theta equal alpha over two. Now remember, we've already proved these. I don't have to prove them again. We're getting something new from them. So here's the idea. I'm gonna say, let's imagine that theta is alpha over two, half of some other angle. Well, then if theta is alpha over two, two times alpha over two would give us just alpha, the angle itself that we had a half angle of for our formula. So we're gonna get this formula for half an angle related to the whole thing, which is much nicer. We have to deal with that fraction. Then we're gonna take a square root of it and have a plus and minus. And the plus and minus will be determined by the quadrant of alpha over two. So I'm gonna talk about all the way through that, but that's where we're headed. You should know where we're going on this one because it's a, it's a little bit weird. So step number one, we've already done it. We have some formulas that we're gonna manipulate and say, let's let this guy be half of some other angle. Let's call it alpha over two. So what would sine squared of, instead of theta alpha over two be? We replace theta everywhere with what we're calling theta equal to, alpha over two. That means we still have a one. We still have this minus cosine, but two theta is now two times alpha over two. All over two. Well, what, what's that give us? This gives a sine squared alpha over two, but on this side we get one minus cosine. Your twos are gonna cancel. That's just cosine alpha all over two. Now we gotta think back. If we really want to find a half angle formula for sine, we gotta get rid of that power two, which means we're gonna take a square root. And you have to remember this, that when you take a square root, you've gotta put a plus and minus in front of that square root that says that what you could get is either positive or negative because power twos always maintain positivity. It means if you plug in a negative and square it, you could also get a positive. So we're gonna do that. Just same, same thing with any other algebra that we do. When you take a square root, you gotta put the plus and minus there. So power two square root, we're gone. We've got just 
sine of alpha over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha over 2. That right there is the half angle formula for sine. And you go, yeah, but that's really confusing because what about the plus and minus? There's an important note that you really need to make. The positive or negative is determined by the quadrant of alpha over two. So what do we mean by that? Remember that sine is positive in quadrants one and two because y is positive there. Cosine is positive in quadrants 4 and 1 because x is positive there. Tangent is positive in quadrants 1 and 3 because positive over positive, negative over negative give you both positive. So sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2, negative in quadrants 3 and 4. Cosine is positive in quadrants 4 and 1, negative in 2 and 3. Tangent is positive in quadrants 1 and 3, negative in 2 and 4. So we use that. We find out where alpha over two is, and I'll show you how to do that, and wherever that angle is, then you could determine sine of that angle would be positive or negative, and so um, we would use positive for alpha over two in quadrants one or two, but negative in three and four. So we locate where that is to determine what sine to use. For sine itself, you're doing positive for one and two, negative for three and four. Cosine, we go through the same exact math. We're going to take a square root after calling theta alpha over two. So let's call it alpha over two. So one plus cosine two theta, now we're calling it two alpha over two. Your twos are going to cancel. We're gonna end up getting cosine squared alpha over two is one plus cosine alpha all over two. And the same way we did here, we're going to take a square root to solve for cosine alpha over 2. We got our square root, we got our plus and minus, and we've just solved for the half angle formula for cosine. So cosine of half of some angle equals plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine of the whole angle. So twice this amount. If this is half the angle, this is the whole thing over 2. Again, you take the positive or the negative depending on the quadrant of alpha over 2. So cosine of alpha over 2 says cosine is going to be positive in quadrants 1 and 4, negative in 2 and 3. So you locate this. You determine cosine of that angle, like whether it's positive or negative. And then you go ahead and pick uh, positive or negative for the square root after that. So last one, tangent squared theta equals one minus cosine two theta over one plus cosine two theta. Let's go ahead, call this alpha over two, then we're gonna get alpha and alpha right here. We'll take a square root after that. So we're just replacing theta with alpha over two. That's half of some other angle. Because our twos cancel here, which is the whole reason why we use these formulas, because the, that double angle cancels half an angle, gives you just the angle, which is nicer to work with in a lot of cases. Those are all gone. We're going to get tangent squared alpha over 2 equals 1 minus cosine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha. Now we're free to go ahead and take a square root. And we're going to get tangent of alpha over 2 equals plus and minus the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha. And that's it. That's the three half angle formulas that we have. One for sine, one for cosine, one for tangent. In the next video, I'll show you exactly how to use them. Right now, I'm going to come back and just have them written on the board, explain which formulas are which, and then we'll be done. All right, that's about it. We've got a lot of new identities, a lot of new formulas that we can use. We started off by using our sum formulas for sine and cosine and tangent, and we got these pretty easy. Uh, we got sine, cosine, tangent of 2 theta. These are the double angle formulas. There's one for sine, there's one for tangent, there are three for cosine because we can manipulate 
this Pythagorean identity a couple different ways. That's the reason where, why that happens. That's why we did it the way we did it. So this one's pretty common. We use this one a lot. Uh, these ones, you use them not as much. Um, for sine, you only have one. So if you're going to use a double angle formula for sine, it's got to be that. For tangent, it is this. That's all you use. For here, you have options. Now, you might be thinking, well, which one do I use if there's more than one? It, it depends on the context. It really depends on what you're doing. Uh, for some basic work, you can use any of them. Any of them that you want. They're going to come to the same thing. They are equivalent. This equals this equals this. How do you know that? Look, this is manipulated Pythagorean identity. That's all it's doing. They have to be the same. So that's pretty cool. Uh, from there, we solved these two for cosine squared and sine squared and got two new identities. So that comes from these two. From tangent, we just use the fact that tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. Put these in ratio, we got that one and eliminated the twos. From these three, we took square roots and got half angle. How do we get half angle? We call these angles alpha over two so that smartly two times alpha over two would just give us alpha and let us deal with a usually easier angle than alpha over two. Um, so we got those half angle formulas. A big note you got to write down is the positive or negative, the plus and minus, is determined by the quadrant of alpha over two. You look up where that is and it will determine whether sine, cosine, and tangent is positive or negative in that quadrant, and then we pick the appropriate sign for our half angle formulas. So I hope that it made sense. I know it's a lot of proofs, not a lot of examples. I kind of like the proofs. I think they're very interesting. Um, and it's, it's valuable to know where this stuff comes from, not just thrown at you. So this is all stemming from really two ideas, the sum formulas, and the Pythagorean identities, and then just taking square roots. So I hope it's made sense, I hope you enjoyed it, and next video we're gonna talk about how you use this. So we'll start with some very basic examples, move on to some identities, and then some equations at the end. Hope you're doing well.